What shall we eat? Genesis 1.29. Let's look quickly. This is just a little health nugget that I'd like to share you, with you real quick before we sing a song and have Brother Jay speak to us. This is something that the Lord just laid on my heart in the last few days that I needed to do a presentation on. Genesis 1.29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. Now the Lord created us, and so He knows what makes these bodies run best. Okay? Now, Spirit of Prophecy says in Child Guidance, and I thought it was interesting, this was found in that book, Child Guidance, page 382, if meat eating was ever helpful, what's the rest of it say? It is not safe now. It is not safe now. Now, most of us have at least heard that meat eating is associated with heart disease, and cancer, and even diabetes, more or less, arthritis, many other health issues. But did you know that eating meat is linked with Alzheimer's disease? How many of you knew that? Just a few of you knew that. Good. Okay. Now, these are North Dakota statistics on Alzheimer's disease. It may be kind of hard to see, so I'm just going to point some things out. This is an age group right here, age 65 to 85. In the year 2000, there were 16,000 cases of Alzheimer's disease in the state of North Dakota. Ten years later, 18,000. That's a 13% increase in the uh, cases of Alzheimer's disease. Now, there's a reason for that. And that's what we want to look at tonight. Research has shown a connection between mad cow disease and Alzheimer's. There's a, a variant of Al Alzheimer's called Kreuzfeld Jakob. And you can probably pronounce that one of you guys better than I can. Um, but it is, it, it, research has shown that there's a connection now between the prion that causes the Kreuzfeld Jakob and Alzheimer's disease. What is a prion? Simply put, prions are proteins. It's, this is short for proteinaceous infectious particles. That's what the prion is short for. They're really not living things. They are proteins. And as such, they really can't be killed in any way except extreme heat or very harsh chemicals like bleach or something like that. And that, of course, would destroy the food. So I guess nobody's going to want to pour bleach on their meat before they eat it or cook it until it's consumed. There's nothing left to eat in order to destroy this prion. That's about the only way you can uh, get rid of the, the prion to decontaminate. Autopsies performed on individuals who died with Alzheimer's disease show a spongy texture to the brain. Now, mad cow disease, the, the technical name for that is bovine spongiform encephalopathy. That's a big name, so that's why they call it mad cow. But basically, the brain looks like a sponge. It has holes all in it, like Swiss cheese, sort of. So the only way to get a 100% accurate diagnosis on Alzheimer's disease is on autopsy. It's kind of late then, don't you think? <laughs> to get an accurate diagnosis to treat. Now, people who have this like I said, they show the same texture in their brain. I'm going to show you some pictures of that in just a minute. More than 5 million Americans today have Alzheimer's. It's the sixth leading cause of death. One in three seniors who die in America dies with Alzheimer's or dementia. In 2013, it cost upwards of $203 billion in health care costs in the United States alone. That's a lot of money. Where did all this start? Well, basically, um, the cattle industry, they want to boost the protein intake for their, their cattle. And uh, one, it, this started in England, as far as I understand, as far as I've been able to find out. And they would take sheep who had died, and they would grind up these sheep and add it to the feed of these cows. Well, cows are herbivores. They wouldn't normally eat a dead sheep anyway. No. But they grind it up and add it to their feed. And, and it, it's been discovered that many of the sheep had a disease called scrapie. And it was, it was giving these cows this mad cow disease. They had the outbreak in England. I was going to show you, I don't think I'll show it right now, um, a little news clip that showed that when the outbreak occurred in uh, the United Kingdom, 150 human beings died 
from the human variant of this, this BSE or this uh, mad cow disease. Now, let's look at some pictures. This is a normal brain here on your, your left. And I don't know how well you can see it, but this is the brain of an individual with Alzheimer's disease. You can see how it's deeply pitted. It's much smaller. And if you superimpose this on this, this is what it looks like. It, you may be able to see the outline from the back of the normal brain. It's quite a bit larger than the brain of an individual with Alzheimer's disease. This is a little better picture, maybe. You can see the difference in the size and the ventricles are much enlarged and there's a lot of fluid there. The cortex shrivels up. There's, these are some interesting facts here. The cortex shrivels. That interferes with planning, thinking, on all, and remembering things. <laughs> the shrinkage is especially severe in the hippocampus, which is a portion of the cortex, and it plays a key role in forming new memories. That's why these people have a difficulty with remembering things. And of course the ventricles become enlarged. These are called tangles right here. And you can kind of see, this is normal. You can see the normal cells. On the, these are nerve cells. The normal nerve tissue here. This is an Alzheimer's patient. You can see why their thoughts are confused. Okay? Now, I want to read this to you from Spirit of Prophecy. A meat diet changes the disposition and strengthens animalism. When the animal part of the human agent is strengthened by meat eating, the intellectual powers diminish. What's that last word? Proportionately. Proportionately. You remember that first quote that we saw? If meat eating was ever safe, it's not now. It's not anymore. Okay, now, when we change a diet from one of meat eating to one of a fruit and vegetable diet, there will always be at first a sense of weakness and lack of vitality. And many urge this as an argument for the necessity of a meat diet. But this result is the very argument that should be used in discarding a meat diet. Now, many of you know that I flew down to Alabama in July to help a family member who wanted to become uh, at least part-time vegan. And uh, he, he had this sense of weakness when he got on the, the vegetarian diet, the vegan diet. Do you know why? Who knows why? Who'd like to venture a guess? No guesses? Was he detoxifying? Detox, yeah, that's a big part of it. That's a big part of it. But I think probably the bigger picture here is, number one, have, has anybody ever seen a cow slaughtered, an animal slaughtered? What is their state? What are they? They're, they're scared to death. Well, you know what causes that reaction? is hormones. The fear hormones. The fight or flight hormones. When you have that sudden fight or flight, what does it make you feel like? You're all jittery and you're ready. Your pupils, pupils dilate and you're ready to either run or fight, right? Well, that's how the animals feel. And when they're killed, they're scared. And all those hormones flood into their system. So when you eat that meat, you're eating those animal hormones that excite the... And we just read the passage about exciting the animal passions. The second thing is these, these animals these days are so doped up with antibiotics, with hormone growth hormones so that they grow quickly. When you eat that meat, guess what you're also getting? All the growth hormones, all of the, the antibiotics, everything that's pumped into that piece of meat is pumped into you. By the way, I don't know if you noticed on one of the slides that this uh, phenomena of mad cow disease has also, it's not limited to just cows. It's been found in, in deer, in pigs, and even in chickens. So don't think I'm going to eat chicken and be safe. Now, I appreciate this passage, Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. In that day, this is talking about our day, seven women shall take hold of one man saying, I'm going to eat my own bread, and I'm going to wear my own apparel, but I want to be called by your name to take away my reproach. And brothers and sisters, God has a message for us, and that message includes everything from diet, the way we eat, the way we dress, every aspect of the way we live. Don't let this be your attitude. I want to be called by your name, but I don't want to obey your rules. I just want to have the benefits of this relationship and not the responsibilities of it. If you'll take your hand out now, have these been handed out? While those are being passed out, I'm going to go ahead and show you this little clip. Good job.
uh, Parkinson to be uh, classified in that mad cow? It, it's not mad cow, but they are related. These are all diseases that affect the neurovascular system, neurological system. Okay, I'm going to show this clip, and then I want to read a few of these, and then we're just going to sing one song since we're running kind of late, and we'll let Brother Jay come up. New case of mad cow in it? California. It has been six years since the last scare, and a lot of precautions were taken then. So how did this cow get sick, and how dangerous is this development? ABC's David Wright has the latest. Rarely does the health of a single cow have billion dollar implications, but in this case it does, because it's America's first confirmed case of bovine spongiform encephalitis in six years. BSE is mad cow disease, a potentially deadly brain-wasting infection that can be transferred to humans. The animal was a dairy cow from the state of California. Our laboratory confirmed the findings. And Today, the chief veterinary officer for the USDA cautioned this is an isolated case, not the start of an epidemic. Our livestock population is some of the healthiest in the world, and the consumers should be confident in our food supply. Everyone still remembers the devastating outbreak of mad cow disease in Britain during the 90s. 150 people died. After the first case of mad cow disease was confirmed in this country in 2003, dozens of countries banned U.S. beef. Shipments dropped more than 80 percent. China still bans U.S. beef imports. Today, the USDA insisted this fourth confirmed case occurred at a rendering plant for products other than food. This particular animal did not enter the food supply at any time. So there is no concern about that. But the USDA currently tests only 40,000 cows a year of the millions that are slaughtered. USDA has not completed their investigation of this particular case, and so we'll be watching carefully to see what they find. Obviously, if it turns out that we have tainted feed, we will have a much larger problem on our hands. Now, it is a mystery how this cow in Hanford, California, contracted the disease. Apparently, it was not from tainted feed, which had been the source of previous outbreaks, but the FDA and the USDA will be testing the feed supply anyway, Diane. And the government advice to consumers, David? Well, they say that the beef is safe. Don't forget the, uh, the burgers and the, and the steaks off the grill at this point. However, food safety advocates have been warning that stricter safeguards should be put in place, but cattlemen have resisted them, Diane. And David Wright reporting. He'll have more on this, of course, tomorrow. Who do you believe? Not the government. <laughs> if meat eating was ever healthful, it is not safe now. Let's just look at a couple of these uh, printouts from the Spirit of Prophecy. I just want to read a bold. Of, let's just go down and look at the bold, but I encourage you to read these. The first, uh, second paragraph, many die of diseases wholly due to meat eating while the real cause is not suspected by themselves or by <coughs> others. Wrap your mind around that. Among those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, meat eating will eventually be done away. Flesh will cease to form a part of their diet. Are you waiting for the Lord? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. The liability to take diseases increased how much? Tenfold. Tenfold by meat eating. From the light God has given me, the prevalence of cancer in tumors is largely due to gross living on dead flesh. Flesh was never the best food, but its use is now doubly objectionable since, the, since disease in animals is so rapidly increasing. When did Sister White die? Who knows? 1915. 1915. It's been a long time since it wasn't safe. Next paragraph, a meat diet changes the disposition and strengthens animalism. Remember the picture of a pit bull with his teeth bared? I've seen a lot of people who act very aggressively depending on what they eat. Okay, the next paragraph, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just read the last two paragraphs. It has been clearly presented to me that God's people are to take a firm stand against meat eating. Would God, for 30 years, give His people the message that if they desire to have pure blood and clear minds, they must give up the use of flesh meat if He did not want them to heed 
this message? By the use of flesh meats, the animal nature is strengthened and the spiritual nature is weakened. I believe each one of you are here because you want to strengthen your spiritual nature, right? Amen. Well, here's one way how you can co cooperate with that. The intellectual, the moral, and the physical powers are depreciated by the habitual use of flesh meats. Meat eating deranges the system, beclouds the intellect, and blunts the moral sensibilities. We say to you, dear brother and sister, your safest course is to leave meat alone. Praise the Lord.